Welcome to Viewpoints. I'm Heather Isbron, and with me today is Scott Kelberg, Director for the National Training and Education Division at the National Preparedness Directorate at FEMA. Welcome, Scott. Thanks for having me, Heather. Sure. Well, today we want to talk a lot about the, uh, the initiatives at NPD, National Preparedness Directorate, and what's going on there. So uh, tell us first about uh, what you do exactly every day. Sure. Uh, I run the National Training and Education Division, and uh, we get the, the, the pleasure of uh, managing and administering many different programs, including the funding for the center, uh, which is a great program. We've been a part of that for, for years since, it's, since it started. Uh, we also manage uh, about 40 different training programs for emergency responders across chemical, biological, radiological, explosive uh, elements within Homeland Security and Emergency Management, uh, the National Domestic Preparedness Consortium, the Rural Domestic Preparedness Consortium, and we've also got a uh, competitive element of our continuing training grants, and we've got some great programs out there for the first responders as well on cybersecurity, on countering violent extremism, and emergency management leadership, just to name a few. Yeah, we want to talk about those. It sounds like you have a real wide, deep portfolio of, of programs. And, you know, with these, uh, this whole environment of limited resources, limited funding, I think there's a lot of first responders out there that are wondering, you know, how can I get training education opportunities? And, and what would you recommend? I mean, how would they access that? With UASI funds going down, is there any connection? Well, there's, there's many different access points, but the best one for getting access and information about our training programs is at firstrespondertraining.gov. That has all, all of our catalogs. It's got all of our training programs that I just described now that we fund directly uh, across those many areas of, of emergency management and homeland security. There's also uh, a state and federal catalog of training programs that the state and federal entities fund, but they are run through our course review process. And they also are um, in the catalog that can be found at firstrespondertraining.gov. And the great part there is that a state can use their grant funds for UASI, State Homeland Security Grant Program, to get to those training programs for travel uh, and access those other requirements through the Homeland Security Grant Program. So it really frees those programs up for them once it goes through and winds up in those catalogs. And the dates of submission for a lot of that is just varied. So it's just so much there, you can't just put a finger on a date of uh, application or anything like that. Right. Um, all the programs run through our, our process, and we've got standards there for how long it takes a program to be developed. Uh, but there's really a difference between course development and course review. Mm -hmm. But we do have a standard time frame for how long it takes our, our subject matter experts to take a look at the program and then go back and forth with the training provider and make sure that they're answering all the questions and they've got things in there that relate to the national um, emergency management system and other elements to make sure that there's, those policies are being followed and that they're, they're the best programs that can possibly be. We've got some great training providers out there. Our National Domestic Preparedness Consortium is incredible and they really hit most of the areas that there are out there for our emergency first responders. Yeah, and you mentioned cyber. It's such a huge, huge area. It's like saying Homeland Security. You know, talk about the cyber programs a little bit. Sure, we're really excited about cyber programs. Um, our National Domestic Preparedness Consortium member uh, in Tex at Texas A&M University, they have a series of, of different cyber programs um, that they've uh, helped develop or um, worked on over the years. Uh, and we're really excited about two new programs that aren't yet on the street, but are under development and will soon be out. Um, through that continuing training grant program that I mentioned earlier, which is competitive, the Illinois Emergency Management Agency this year um, is almost ready to put a program out on the street on cyber. And we've also got another program that was just awarded for cybersecurity to the uh, University of Texas at San Antonio. And they're part of a larger cybersecurity consortium um, through a host of universities that are doing things. So they're also helping put the best product down the street. So. Those are two programs in training for cyber that we're really, excited, we're really excited about. And we're also working with the DHS cyber division and other cyber components within the interagency to make sure we're putting out the right programs and we're reaching the right students uh, across cybersecurity. Okay, so you have training for cyber and other things, and then you have education. What are the strategy and policy opportunities for cyber, or are, there, are they included in those, in those training programs? 
or is there a difference? Sure. There, there, um, there's, there's elements between the two that we want to make sure are synced up. Mm -hmm. um, that uh, the executive order on cybersecurity that recently came out, um, the national preparedness system, uh, the, eventually there'll be a national training education system, which is targeting putting the right student in the right course for the right investment, for the right outcome. Really getting this right when it comes to training. Uh, when it comes to cyber training and cyber education, obviously through the center, through the different programs that, that you run here, uh, in terms of elements of courses in the master's program, we're really excited about that. Uh, the mobile education teams, uh, having cyber as focus areas of those discussions with key leaders, both in the governor's offices and the mayor's office. We, we wanna make sure that the, the same messages are coming out. But cyber is really a brand new topic. And so we're still struggling a little bit to make sure we get the right training out there. That's why we're bringing in the interagency and the right people to help us develop. Because at FEMA, we really manage and administer the programs, whether it's training or education. And we really need the help of the interagency and subject matter experts to make sure we're hitting the right themes and the right areas. Because like I said, it's putting the right student in the right course for the right investment and the right outcome. And we really need a lot of help from the interagency to make sure we're doing that correctly. And what would you see as, and moving out of the cyber discussion, but what would you see as the challenges for administrating um, these types of programs for the next two to five years? Well, it's, it's really a lot of things. As you mentioned earlier, uh, grant funding for state and locals um, has certainly either flatlined or, or gone down over the years, and uh, we're in tough economic times. Um, but we're, we're really lucky that we've got training programs that I've mentioned that really help the first responder, help fund get them to our programs. So we have programs through our consortium, our Rural Domestic Preparedness Consortium, and our National Domestic Preparedness Consortium that we're really um, encouraged by that will allow the first responder literally pay for all the expenses from the minute they leave their house to getting to the training and back. So all the elements of uh, per diem and travel and all those associated costs, as long as they can have the time and time has a value and a cost as well, yeah. but we, we really pick up the bill, a, a part of these uh, larger national training programs that allows that flexibility. So it, it, it hopefully it puts the first responder in the right frame of mind so that when they're sitting in the class, they can focus not on the expenses, let us handle that, but they can focus on the learning. And the same goes true for many of the education programs. Let them focus on the discussions in the class or the training that's coming towards them and let them really be a student and let us sort of manage the ebb and flow of the finances because that's really one of the biggest challenges right now that we're staying up with the needs of the student when the economy is where it is and we're all suffering to some degree uh, with budgets being cut, so on and so forth. So we feel that we're able to at least provide that level of service that's commensurate, maybe not as high of levels in the past, but with our training programs, we still can allow for the student to focus on the training. So talking about uh, going around the country and, and talking to the chiefs of the various departments and directors of various agencies, the, the benefit of having uh, FEMA and, and agencies who are really committed to education and training in spite of not having a lot of resources. I just think that's a very valuable thing. And our, our students, our center in the country, I, I believe, has really uh, benefited by being able to be a student, be able to think about those real complex issues within their agencies that they can actually put a, a, a thought process and a strategy and a policy in place. Without FEMA's support, we really wouldn't have that. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, we're happy to serve the, the chiefs, throughout the country. Uh, what we do is to provide the training for the fire, for law enforcement, EMS, uh, medical services, so on and so forth. All the disciplines that are involved in emergency management and homeland security. And we're really excited about our programs. I think that's what helps. Uh, we're able to administer these funds and we know that if we administer funds for the center or for our training programs, it's gonna allow those chiefs and their staff to be in these important training education programs and have the discussions that are so valuable around emergency management or homeland security. But we really couldn't do what we do, obviously, without the funds being appropriated by Congress. And we help, obviously, to administer and manage the funds. That's our job. But we couldn't do what we do without those funds for both on the education side for the center or for the funds for our training partners 
on that side of things if it weren't for those uh, in Congress providing those funds. And it's obviously not easy in these, in these times, uh, but they've made that commitment because training and education is just so important. Right. And, you know, most agencies are really just trying to even just get their missions done. You know, law enforcement is trying to catch the bad guys. Fire is just trying to put out fires. But there's so much more to it these days in terms of natural disasters, terrorism. Um, we're doing some really exciting research in active shooters. And um, there's a lot of public health uh, in terms of pandemic. So we're excited about the theses that are coming out and being implemented. Uh, what are some success stories that you're seeing around the country? Sure, and I think the, the types of programs that we're putting out with the continuing training grants, the competitive piece, I think that really is showcasing where we're trying to go and meet the nation's needs with training in terms of cybersecurity, emergency management, leadership, uh, environmental health, isolation and quarantine, countering violent extremism, weapons of mass destruction. Uh, those kinds of programs are really what we're seeing. And we really have a, a strong evaluation process where uh, we, we, all, we ask each student to evaluate each program on the front and back end, and we really want to know are their knowledge, skills, and abilities improved from the beginning to the end of the program. But then we also have uh, different levels of, of assessment where we like to go back to the, the student months after they've left the course and see what kind of impact it's had, not only on them, but on their agency or their jurisdiction. Has a, an operating procedure changed? Has something in training changed? because of what they learned in a program that we funded. So those kinds of testimonials and those kinds of stories around either the, the types of programs I mentioned or others, they come rolling in all the time. And there's nothing better than to see a testimonial from someone in law enforcement or fire, or emergency management, that's saying, hey, this is a great program, and I'm really thankful that we took it because it helped us learn a lot more about the topic. Well, it sounds like you're doing some great work. And uh, we really appreciate your time today. Thank you for coming. Thanks for having me, Heather. 